I'm calling it done. Um, let's see. I decided, you know, I was going to use those flowers, those, um, this journal page. I don't know if I've even shown this journal page where I used them. These flowers. I had a handful of those that I thought I might use on the cover because the colors were pretty close to what I was needing. So I just took a handful and I did a, a Morticia Adams and chopped the little heads off. Stuck them on here every which way, arranged them, rearranged them, didn't like them, decided they looked too flat. So I um, kind of started bending them to give them more dimension, make them pop up. No, that didn't look right. Ripped them completely apart, took all the petals apart, reconfigured them. That didn't look right. Then I remembered these little flowers. And I have a video for these. Um, I'll try to remember to post that down there in the description. But they're just little junk mail. I think I made them out of uh, catalog pages. And I made up a whole bunch of them. Never did use them because, you know, I don't make things when I need them. I make them when I want to make them and then discover later that I need them. Like today, I discovered, oh my gosh, I needed these. So I went and got them. And what I did was I just ended up putting some of those other flower petals underneath, just kind of like that. And then I just started sticking these everywhere. Remember those little beads, those Jenny Belly? beads that I made. I just put those in the center and just glopped them on there. And I normally don't embellish like this at all. My journals are, for the most part, they're pretty plain. Um, and that's because I want them to be used. They're just easier to use if you don't have a lot of dimension. But this is not a journal. This is a book. It's going to sit most of the time. It's not something I'm going to use every day. So there's no reason why, you know, I couldn't just proof it up. So you can see that sticks up off there quite a bit. Um, so it's just a happy little mound of flowers. And I like it. I like the way it turned out. I think it's just divine intervention that those flowers that I made that time just happened to be just right for this book. So that's what I ended up with for decoration. I didn't do anything else anywhere else because that's really quite enough. The closure, I had talked about using the necklace and I did use it. Okay. Let me tell you about this necklace. Let me tell you about this type of necklace. You know, I said before, it's made out of that pot metal, which is just really soft, cheap metal. Lots of um, cheap jewelry is made out of it. You can really take it, you can break it. If I twisted this hard, it would just break. It's really, really soft. Um, but sometimes is a good thing, sometimes not so good. I didn't like the bright gold. Gold on here would go great, yes, but this bright, shiny stuff, no. No. And I've, I make jewelry, too, as well as paper stuff. And the only way I've been able to get the gold, you know, gold plating off of these things is to sand it off. And I usually just use my Dremel. Okay. See all of the little nooks and crannies and crevices? It is a pain to sand the gold finish off of these things. And if it was a piece of jewelry, I was making jewelry out of it to wear or to sell, I would do it. I've done it. And I would do it again. But for a book closure, no. I'm not going to do it. I mean, number one, it's tedious and time consuming. And number two, you have to do it so carefully because, I mean, you just set that Dremel on there a fraction of a second too long and, you know, the thing breaks. So I wasn't willing to do it. Um, couldn't think of how else I was going to get that gold off of there. Figured I could probably paint over it, but, you know, I'm going to have to use, um, I thought maybe alcohol inks. But even so, it's, this is so slick, I don't know what is going to stick to it good. So I knew I had to get the finish off there somehow. So I know that you can use a solution of boric acid and denatured alcohol to remove gold plating. Gold plating, 
I think it'll work on silver plating too. And what you have to do is you have to mix the boric acid with the denatured alcohol. You dip the piece in there and then you hit it with your torch and set it on fire. And it burns off the alcohol. It leaves the boric acid. You torch it again and then it removes the um, plating, theoretically. I don't have denatured alcohol on hand. I had rubbing alcohol. I don't keep boric acid on hand, but I had borax. So I thought maybe <laughs> I could use rubbing alcohol and borax instead of denatured alcohol and boric acid. It's practically the same. In my mind, I thought, you know, it might maybe take two or three dips instead of just one or two. Um, so I gave it a shot took my little piece out there, dipped it in the <laughs> mixture, <laughs> hit it with my torch, it lit up like it was supposed to, watched it burn, and it left the um, white residue on there like it was supposed to, but it, when I, you know, went to burn the residue off, it, it just came off and it was still shiny gold underneath. So that didn't work. I tried, but evidently you have to have the exact right products and I don't have them. I'm not interested in going to buy them. So, um, second thing I tried was I have some deglosser. I have this big gallon can of deglosser that I don't. I can't even remember why I bought it. I think I was going to try to paint something that was laminate. I'm not really sure. Anyway, it's supposed to be used on painted surfaces for you know, like to take the shine off of an uh, enamel paint if you want to paint with latex over it. But I thought, well, it takes the shine off of stuff, so maybe it'll take the shine off of this. The stuff is made with all your basic toluene, benzene, acetone. It is just like a big can of cancer right there in the garage. And, you know, I mixed it up and did the whole, you know, ventilated area thing. Let it soak. It did absolutely nothing. It did beyond nothing. It maybe even just made it shinier. I don't know. I couldn't tell. So that didn't work. And that kind of irritated me. But I had sanded a little bit off. Um, I just kind of ran it across some sandpaper just to see how thick the plating was. And it was real, real thin. So I sanded a little off. And I thought, well, maybe it just needs a chemical to get in there. So the next thing I tried was liver of sulfur. And I know liver of sulfur does not really work on pot metal. It doesn't work on plated metal. But I don't know. I thought maybe for some strange reason it, the universe would cut me some slack and, and it would work. So I opened. I keep it outside because this stuff, it smells like something called liver of sulfur should smell. You know, you, you can just imagine it is horrific. I keep it in a little, I should have brought it in. It's in a little tub, kind of like a small sour cream tub. And I seal it around the lid with electrical tape. It's inside a Ziploc baggie, which is inside a Ziploc baggie, which is inside a Ziploc baggie. Three Ziploc baggies, electrical tape. I can still smell it when I open the drawer where I keep it. That is how potent this stuff is. And it's toxic as all get out, I'm sure, you know, and it's, you can Google it, liver of sulfur, and it's used in, for my, when I make jewelry, you can use it and it will put a patina on uh, copper and silver. And it's, you know, it's really cool for that. But it has to be handled carefully. The thing about it is it doesn't last. I've never had it last even a year, and I, every time I buy it, I put the date on it, and the date on this container was October 2011, and sometime, I, I guess I probably haven't used it in three or four months, it died. Um, when I opened the drawer to get it, I didn't get that sulfur smell that I normally do, and I thought, hmm, no, I hope nothing's wrong with it, and sure enough, opened it up and, and it was dead. And you can tell when it's dead. It comes, you can get the liquid kind or you can get the solid kind. Neither one of them lasts very long. If you make jewelry a lot, I mean like that's what you do, then you know, you'll, you'll get a lot of use out of it. But if you're like me and you do it maybe a couple times a year, um, you'll find that it's gonna, it doesn't really die. I guess it goes bad. It, um, you know, it doesn't, 
it's not active anymore. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Anyway, I could tell when I opened the container it looked funky and it didn't smell sulfury or at least as sulfury as it should. So I knew it wasn't going to work. I tried it anyway and sure enough it it didn't do anything. So um, it was one fail after another to try to distress this piece of metal without ruining it and without spending hours and hours. I finally ended up um, just using my Dremel to sand off what I could and then decided I would just cover the rest with alcohol inks and that worked great. Let's see, I bet you probably can't see this. This, I think I showed how I intended to use it and it worked. I just put a, a little uh, bolt right there through that cover and a little bolt right there and the clasp is right here and it's just your standard lifty uppy jewelry clasp. There you have it. See there's a nut here, nut here and I just put some alcohol inks over that too. But that's the clasp and I actually really really love the way this turned out and um, I just might uh, do that to the rest of that piece that's left and make a bracelet out of it because <laughs> it's pretty dang awesome. Okay, here is, here's what I learned. I learned lots of stuff in this whole process because this is one of those things where I haven't made one before so you know I had to kind of make it up as I went along. I don't know of anyone who's made one like it. There's some that are similar, but you know, I didn't, there wasn't one that I could go back and look and see how someone else did it. So I didn't have that to lean on. There was no pattern. It wasn't a kit. It, you know, it was totally trial and error. And I didn't make up a prototype before I did the actual book, which I usually do, but I didn't take the time to do that this time. So I just had to cover my mistakes or my, hmm, my learning processes as I went. This this wasn't a problem. I got the bolt in. Got, this sticks out a little bit too far and I might actually just take my Dremel and cut off the bolt flush with the nut because that's kind of, I don't know, that kind of bugs me. I'll see if it's, I'll see if how badly it bugs me before I do that. This one was good. This one I wasn't so sure about. You remember um, this page was sort of an afterthought. This pocket was an afterthought and you know it fit just exactly right, no more. So when I went to put the bolt in, you can see how close it is to the edge. I was really not comfortable with it being that close to the edge, but I had no choice. Because any further in, and these plates will not fit. I would have had to rip my whole pocket out if I wasn't willing to do that. So I got it in just as far as I possibly could, put the nut on, it's on there really tight, so I'm hoping that that's going to hold and it won't pull through. I don't think it will because it's tight. Um, so I think that's good, but you can see it kind of chewed a hole in the side of this pocket. And, you know, I have been messing with this pocket and here and all this stuff so bad, this portal pocket was just barely holding up. So I went in and I just lined it with some little, I don't know if you can see, some little skinny strips of black cardstock mm -hmm. across the bottom and sides just to kind of reinforce it. And then I put two little patches on the corners here just to reinforce them. So my little pocket is in much better shape now. And you can see that this fits just exactly. There is no wiggle room. But that's okay. I don't need any. If it's just right. So I've got my um, my whole book here is done. I showed, did I show these? Yeah, I think I already did. I showed my little sample tags and um, I've got my cover decorated. I've got my closure on. You know, I really like this closure. I may use this more often because that's that's just kind of fun. And I have a bunch of these cheesy old 80s necklaces like this that I could chop up and use for closures. So I may do that. So there is our finished 
um, uh, embossing folder holder. <laughs> there we have it. So what's next, you ask? Well, I'm glad you asked. I've got these two canvases. I've had them forever. And, yeah, yeah, well, you can't really see them. But anyway, they're two just regular canvases. Heavily, heavily textured because there is tons of layers of paint and paper and texture and crud all over them. These canvases, I've, I've reused them so many times. I, I, can't, I can't name the layers that are underneath them. But they're still good canvases. So I thought, well, I'll use them. I've got a place, a wall that I need to put something on. So I just slapped some paint on here. And this is for my house, which is all shabby chic. So that's why it's all pastel -y. And then I put some, uh, just some paper on there. And I have no clue where to go next. I can't decide if I want it more painty or more collagey. You know, a little of both would be great, but you know, usually there's one that's more predominant. Do I want a, a an abstract whatever, or do I want a scene? Do I want big flower? What do I want? I don't know. I don't know what I want. So, um, if you know what I want, if you could just let me know, that would be awesome, because um, I don't know, and I have no direction, and. Um, I'm not sure what to do next on those, but that's my next project. So, there we have it. One down, one more to go, and I guess I will um, see y'all next time.